Carlos Nelson with Cascade Media Group. And today on our political uh, channel, we're going to be interviewing uh, someone who is running for city council, uh, Mr. Daryl Curls. How are you doing uh, this evening, Daryl? I'm great. How are you? Doing all right. Let's get started. Uh, I want you to tell our audience a little bit about yourself. I told you, you know, the Curl's name rings in this town for people that are woke and have 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 been here. And I know I've done business with uh, your daddy. Uh, this is back in the 70s because I used to do real estate and what have you, your sister and what uh -huh. have you. And then going to uh, Phil, uh, Senator Curl's. Uh, I haven't had that much uh, with uh, Kiki, but uh, your sister, boy, the queen is just too much. Uh, Karen's <laughs> too much. I told you. She was like, you need to interview my brother. And I was like, your brother ain't wrote no check to me. She hung the phone up on me. I was like, <laughs> yeah. So well, I'm really, you know, I'm really interested to, and I'm, I'm sure uh, a lot of my viewers are interested in who uh, Daryl Curls is. So let's begin. If if you want, go back to kindergarten. Tell the people who you are, uh, son of Kansas City. Okay, yes, sir. Um, I was uh, born and raised in Kansas City. Uh, been here all my life. Uh, went uh, to Catholic grade school, Catholic high school. Uh, graduated from Bishop Lillis High School, uh, which is no longer in existence. It's, it closed in 1978, 79, somewhere around there. Uh, but uh, as you mentioned, I am uh, a member of the Curls family. You could say that I am the baby of the family, the youngest of the siblings of, of Fred Curls. Um, there were uh, seven of us, and... Um, there are three of us left now. Um, so, um, like you said, uh, I've just been here. I've worked all my life. Uh, been um, after I graduated high school, uh, got hired at the General Motors Leeds plant, uh, which closed in 1978. I was there for 10 years. I was fortunate enough to get a job at Ford after that, where uh, I just recently retired from Ford uh, October the 1st after 35 years at Ford. So uh, I've spent 45 years of my life in the automobile industry. During that period of time, I worked my way through college where I received my associate's degree, my bachelor's degree, and my master's of business degree. Uh, my associates from uh, Penn Valley, my uh, bachelor's from Park and my master's from Central Michigan University. Uh, I've been very much involved in the community, as you know, and probably your viewers know that my uh, family has uh, really been involved with public servants, uh, public service. That's been the uh, mantra of our family. And so I have continued with that. And I've served in various different capacities on various community boards, and uh, just involved to try to make my community a much better community. Uh, I'm currently president of my Homes Association, which is in South Kansas City. I live in Hickman Mills, been in Hickman Mills for the past 36 years. My Homes Association is Kirkside Homes Association, been president of that for the last 22 years. I've served uh, on the Jackson County Combat Commission I was chairman and vice chair of the Combat Commission for six years uh, under Catherine Shields when she was uh, uh, county executive. I've uh, served on the Jackson County Democratic Committee for the past 20 years, uh, served uh, as committee man in the 25th Ward, uh, also was chairman of the Jackson County Democratic Committee from 2002 to 2004. Um, I've served on the Hickman Mill School Board. I was a Hickman Mill School Board member for nine years from 2008 to 2017. And um, 
served in various capacities in the community on various boards, served on the Grandview Triangle, served um, on the, I'm currently serving on the Community Assistance Council uh, and uh, just been involved with trying to, like I said, help make our community better, working for the people and trying to continue to uh, strive to make Kansas City a much livable and better place to live. Oh, uh, let me say this. <laughs> you served a bunch <laughs> for sure. <laughs> I had no idea uh, uh, that you were even involved. I thought you was a teacher or something. <laughs> I'm serious. You know, if 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 you're not, I'm in the media, and if you're really not in the media, I'm saying not like me, but the camera's on you and they're writing about you. You've been totally ignored. You done served on a whole lot of things. And when you mentioned about Hickman Mills School Board, because uh, my brother-in-law, and now I have South Suburban Basketball, Hickman Mills, y'all let us use those gyms out there to run South Suburban at, yes. at, at Hickman Mills. And I didn't know that you were on the board, my uh, friend Carol Graves is on Hickman Mill School Board right now. Yes. So I know Carol. I served with Carol. Uh, and uh, I, I've i been the type of person, Carlos, that uh, I'm not looking for fame uh, or, or fortune or trying to always be in front of a camera or anything. I consider myself a grassroots person, uh, more of an in-the-trench type person. I want to go in there, roll my sleeves up and get the work done and try to do what I can. And I'm not looking for any any platitudes. I'm just looking to try to do what I can to keep our community thriving. So how do you feel uh, that you can uh, do you have a, a any specific platform that you're running on? Well, yes, uh, I, I think that, uh, as I mentioned, all of the. Uh, Involvement that I've had uh, has given me the uh, platform and the foundation uh, to uh, serve on the city council. Uh, I have uh, four things that I really want to try to focus on and work towards once I get elected. And one is uh, basic services. You know, uh, we pay tax dollars for trash pickup, snow removal, uh, street repairs, potholes and stuff. And I want to make sure that the uh, citizens of Kansas City uh, receive the services that they are due uh, for their tax dollars. So I want to try to make sure that we are doing a better job for basic services. Public safety is the second one. I mean, it's obvious that we have a um, homicide issue in Kansas City. So we want to try to do what we can and try to stop that stem of homicides. So uh, we've got a lot of things that's coming up. Uh, the World Cup, we've got the draft, we got a new airport, we got a new women's soccer stadium that's being built. So we're going to have a lot of people coming into our city. So we want to try to make our city as safe as possible for those individuals so that they know that they're coming to a safe city. But we also want to make sure that our residents feel safe in the city that they live in. Um, the uh, other thing is affordable housing. We have to really look at how we can uh, create affordable housing for low income and moderate income uh, individuals. And so uh, affordable housing is gonna be an, another target that I'm gonna be looking at. And then uh, um, um, uh, economic development. Uh, the third and the fifth district definitely needs to be uh, more focused attention paid to in regards to economic development, we need to look at infrastructure and we need to look at uh, what we can do in order to create uh, jobs and opportunities for our youth as, as well as for our residents. Um, we have got to work on uh, getting more focus on the third and the fifth district in regards to economic development. We wanna look at uh, creating and supporting small businesses uh, because I believe that they are the backbone of a city and we need to make sure that they are, are focused on as well. All right. There's 
two main questions. I was going to put this to you, but you you didn't stole my damn questions, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, because I uh, Cascade, we're on trying to create the wave on group economics and block voting. Those are the two things that give us power. Everything else, and I don't care how meaning well you are or what you're doing, they all matter, but the law has black people handcuffed. And the only thing that's gonna change that is the law. And that means who you're voting for. Correct. And all right. And so from my perspective, uh, we have people in office around the nation Kansas City is just a microcosm. I liked how you pointed out third and fifth district because Cascade Media, we're concerned about the whole city, but they got a bunch of media companies pushing their stuff. I'm only concerned mainly about my third and fifth district and people of color. And I have found that we talk about cooperation we talk about group economics, but when it comes time to apply it, that doesn't happen, especially by politicians. And I would be remiss if I don't bring this up to everyone that's coming on board or trying to get elected now. I've done this in the past, but I didn't do it right uh, because I felt with Cascade Media Group, being the only black owned digital that can put things in real time to our community okay. our political and our leadership has been has failed at plugging our community into a viable black owned network that is uh tending to their issues and I can't see how you can move forward in the third or the fifth district if you don't have uh, the third and fifth district plugged in. And we say here at Cascade Media, we really represent or we think we represent the bottom three fourths of our community. And the bottom three fourths of our community is not engaged in group economics and block voting. And I think having that conversation in your circles, but obviously, because like I said, you stole my question. You was talking about, we want to do, do that, use different language, but I try to keep it as simple as possible. And I'm like, who is responsible, not just locally, nationally, for getting us together where uh, we can flex? Now, I moved here in 1978 from New York uh -huh. and I moved to Sheridan the States. I didn't know anything about politics. I say I'm a gangster posing as a businessman. Uh, but I came here, I got introduced to freedom. And boy, when it was time to vote, you I didn't know who the hell, but I went down that damn black and gold card and I seen group economics and block voting work because Phil Curls and Charles Hasley and them type people, but we had a workforce that when they went to bat for us, they could say, we got 40 contractors over here that are licensed, financed and everything. And we don't have that now. Mm -hmm. And from my perspective, uh, the political leadership does not want to plant seeds and wait 10 years to, to grow like uh, tech schools, vocational, and the things that we were involved in. And I'm bringing that up in your conversation to say, what do you feel about what I just said? Well, uh, I, I would agree a hundred percent. You brought up Freedom Incorporated. Uh, obviously, you know, uh, uh, and Phil Curls, you know, my family has been involved with Freedom Incorporated from its inception. 
my father being one of the co-founding members of the organization and Phil Curls, my brother being uh, a president of the organization and me being a member of the organization ever since I was knee high to a jackrabbit. So, and still am a member. Uh, matter of fact, I serve on the executive board as we speak. Uh, I think that um, to, to your point that we need to uh, bring everybody to the table. I, I think that we have to start there. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, you and I have not really had any uh, type of interaction up until recently. And uh, shame on me, shame on you, shame on both of us. That's not, right. <laughs> you know, uh, getting to this point sooner. Uh, and so I think that that's where it begins. We have to start by bringing everybody to the table, but we have to have somebody that's willing to engage those individuals to bring them to the table first. And that's one of the things that I want to do when I'm elected. And that is, is I want to bring uh, people to the table so that we can look at talking about uh, how we can move forward as a community. Uh, as you said, uh, I'm running at large, so I've got to look at the big picture of the whole city, which I intend on doing. But my backyard is the third and the fifth district. That's where I was born and raised in the third and the fifth district. So obviously, I'm going to be looking out for projects and those people in those districts. So like I said, number one, let's let's look at the stakeholders. Let's bring those people together. Let's sit at the table. Let's talk about, you know, what it is that we can agree on so that we can come together as a community and work together so that we can progress to that extent that you just mentioned about, you know, uh, Black media uh, in, in the community. How can we reach uh, those individuals that we need to reach? How can uh, businesses and politicians work together to make sure that we are uh, giving that knowledge to the people that need to have that knowledge? Uh, you talked about a voting block. Uh, Freedom Incorporated still does that in regards to sending out a ballot. They send out uh, a voter guide in regards to letting people know who uh, the organization has vetted and is supporting. Uh, we need to make sure that that is uh, not only in media print, but it's also brought to them through your vehicle and through the vehicle of, uh, uh, of, Digital of, media. The, uh, of the media. Yes, sir. And so, like I said, we've got to try to start by putting people together in a room and let's put down a um, path forward. Because like you said, if we just start you doing one thing, I'm doing another thing, and somebody else is doing something else over here, and we're never inter inter uh, interconnecting or working together, then we're going to just keep spinning our wheels. And until we work together and come together, then that's all we're going to be doing. I'm going to leave you with this before we close out. My observation, and it's personal, and I'm not Freudian, but my personality does not lend for a bunch of small talk. Uh, and most of the people that come in contact with me, they say, well, Mr. Nelson, he talked to me this way or that way. And so, therefore, I don't do business with him, right? Okay. We go, hold it. I'm saying... Uh, I had uh, Mary uh, Bland's granddaughter on here, Man Love, about two yes, weeks sir. ago. All right. And we talked about how our community personalities trump the importance of what people are doing. And I'm like, you buy goods from everybody on the planet. You don't know whether they racist or what. But when it comes to doing business with your own this is what you do. I don't like him or I didn't like what he said, not what that the company represents. 
And mm -hmm. I think that uh, everybody grows. And who you were yesterday, you might not be tomorrow. This is from my boy James Watts. Watts tries to keep me uh, in a certain state of mind about changing. And you exhibited that when you was talking about getting people uh, to focus on two or three issues. And that's why I said keeping it simple, block voting and group economics. If we can come together as people of color on that, we'll solve all other issues. Because I've seen it work. And what I say to people, if you're not at least 45 years old, you've never seen black power flex it muscles. But when the 80s, there was no meals being served downtown Kansas City on the school board, the county, the state, or the city unless black people had a voice at that table. And that, not just a voice at the table was gonna be the deciding voice. And that was because by the time the general population duped it out on any issue, freedom had that block vote that was gonna make whoever came with the cake uh, win that, that decision. And that has not been duplicated for 25 or 30 years, uh, us consolidating our uh, voting power and economics. Yes, I agree. And, and I don't mean to only just suggest that we come together and sit down and talk and come up with a plan, but we have to execute that plan. We have to work in order to make sure that we put together something that is achievable and we work towards achieving it. We just can't put down something on paper and say, oh, well, we met and this is what we come up with and, and it's all good, you know, we're gonna move on. To That's what I've that. seen for the last uh, 30 years. And I'm not talking about just in politics. Yeah. What we as black people represent, we have a lot of shiny objects. We have a lot of dinners, a lot of presentations, but how much traction does that do? You have all these consultants running around here consulting on business. They never even had a business. Don't right. know how to do a brick and mortar business. And they're being funded. That's the whole thing. And so all of these dollars and cents that are going into different programs all of it makes a difference, but what truly makes a difference is block voting and group economics. And I'm gonna leave on that and I'm gonna give you the closing words. All right, well, uh, thank you once again. And like I said, I, I agree with you and, 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 and I plan on working towards that. Uh, I just wanna say thank you for the opportunity uh, and uh, giving me this platform in order to uh, let people get to know me uh, because there probably are a, a, a lot of people out in, in the city that probably know the Curl's name, but they don't know Daryl Curl. And so this is uh, an avenue I appreciate and uh, I uh, appreciate you. And I look forward to having further dialogue with you. And uh, once I get elected, uh, then uh, I'm going to definitely reach out to you and bring you on board because I believe that you have a lot to offer. You have a vehicle that we need and, and we can utilize in regards to getting some things done. So thank you once again for the opportunity and I look forward to uh, speaking with you further. All right. Uh, so I'm stealing Watts's lines because you know Watts is a host every now and then. He's the co-founder of What's Up Kansas City. A lot of people oh, okay. don't know that. James Watts is a co-founder. and But he always signs off, it was a plum pleasing pleasure having you on the show. So I like to steal his line and <laughs> make you mad. <laughs> 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 and then uh, this is our closing line. And it goes, and, and this has been our closing line since 08. When you invest in your community, 
you're really just investing in yourself. Good night. The program is brought to you by the Kansas City Business Association.